Yeah, I thought to just talk for a few minutes about getting kids in nature, and that can be any kids. That can be your own kids or grandkids or the neighbor's kids, or maybe it's a school group or kids from the library. Or maybe you're even taking nature to children. So maybe you're going into the library or into the school or into hospitals. I have two kids. This is my son, Forrest, about to throw a snowball at me. <laughs> and my daughter, Savannah, will be featured on the other slide. Forrest is now 13 and Savannah is 17. So over the years, we've learned lots of things the hard way about what works and what does it. But I certainly don't know it all. And that last photo there was just on our property. So all we did was go outside and just had a few minutes outside. What's the number one? question that kids always ask, right? It's why. <laughs> so before you suggest to the kids that they go outside in the cold when they're just so perfectly happy playing Legos inside, think about what your answer is going to be. And in my experience, kids really don't get that big of a kick out of going outside for fresh air <laughs> or to get some exercise. But kids are smart and kind and really caring, and they do want to make the world a better place. So maybe you want to suggest taking the dog for a walk and go look for some animal tracks in the snow. Or maybe you want to walk down the road just to wave at a friend or take a picture of a pretty winter scene that you can text to a friend or a relative or pick up some garbage along the roadside or maybe even remove some plants that are non-native and don't need to be there to make the world a better place. But if everything else fails, and sometimes it does, you could just say that you really want a cup of hot chocolate and it always tastes better after you've been outside for a little bit. Those are my kids posing by um, the snowman at the seed barn at Kankakee Sands. And here my daughter and I are when she was young and we're at Turkey Run State Park. So feeling comfortable physically, I think, is the first step to feeling really comfortable in nature in winter. In winter, that often means bundling up. And everyone suggests wearing lots of layers. And don't be shy. It's totally right. Wear lots of layers. That can mean two pairs of pants, two or three shirts two coats, a hat, mittens, it doesn't matter. Nature does not judge. Just wear as many clothes as you can and wear that hat. When I um, take the kids out, I always like to bring a bag of extra clothing. And so that way, if we're still getting cold, we can just pile more layers on. Or if we're getting hot, then we can just toss the clothing into the bag. I always like to suggest that people bring clothes, dry clothes, and leave them in the car. So that way you can feel really confident that it's fun to play in the snow and make snow angels and get all wet as you cross the stream, knowing that you're going to have dry clothes waiting in the car for you. So we can feel like an awful lot of work to get kids outside in the winter. And just quite frankly, it is a lot of work. But remember, 10 minutes is better than no minutes at all. Every minute matters. Even small good experiences are worth a lot, I think, in the long run. Planning ahead can make for great experiences. Maybe pick an okay weather day. One with some sunshine is always nice. Not too much wind. Maybe just a little bit of precipitation, but snowflakes are always fun. And you don't need to have big plants, just a little bit of creativity. This is my son going down a very small hill in our yard but my husband made a little bump of snow so that when he hit the bump, he went kind of flying on the sled, which was wildly exciting. And then of course, my husband would suggest that you throw water on that snow to make an ice slick and then really get him going. <laughs> um, you can also set up a structure like putting up some pallets, some wooden pallets before the snowstorm. And then when the snow comes, you can have an instantaneous igloo. And if the weather is really bad and you just can't get out for some reason, remember to share wintertime stories, or read books about kids in winter, or even watch movies that show winter wildlife, winter scenes, and, and people being active in the winter. One cannot underestimate the importance of snacks. Plan to take them with you and plan to have them at the ready if the adventures end. And remember, though, that snacks can lead to needing to use the bathroom, so always plan ahead. Know where you're gonna use the bathroom, uh, where those are located, and how you're gonna get all those layers off in time. So I think we often think of wanting to leave technology at home when we take to the outside, but cameras and videos can really help us capture the joy and relive the memories from the warmth of our home after the adventure is over. And even if the outing was particularly hard, like this one that we did as a family, it hits Ron Hamill after a snow and ice storm where the trail was really slick. At the end, here we are, so jo joyous and triumphant, and what a good feeling to capture that on a camera. And even giving the kids the camera themselves can empower them and help them document the adventure in their own way and give them a real sense of adventure. And here's when we gave my daughter for the camera to capture the adventure. And this is a picture that she took of my husband and her brother. And with just one final thought I have about getting kids in nature, 
is to consider bringing along a friend or two. There's my son, Forrest, in the middle and his two friends, Deidre and Luca, hiking at Conrad in Newton County. When you bring a friend, it can be a friend of the kids. It can be a friend of the family, adult friends, pet friends, somebody else to share that adventure with you. And here are those same three boys, my son in the middle again, at Big Walnut, hiking pretty recently. They're growing up together, growing up in nature. And isn't that what we really want? Growing up in nature. And the trick is finding out how to get our kids outside and ourselves outside together for meaningful, memorable experiences. That was just a quick bit on getting kids outdoors this winter, but I hope this part of the presentation will spark more conversations among all of us to see how we can connect kids more often in nature this coming winter and all the seasons that follow.